On the 19th day of October, Halloween gave to me 19 Kiernan's time traveling, 18 zombie swatting, 17 Kegner's screeching, 16 flying engines, 15 workplace accidents, 14 logs of bouncing, 13 planes exploding, 12 zombie soldiers, 11 angels wrestling, 10 ghostly hitchhikers, 9 basement clowns, 8 vampire cruises, 7 silent heroes, 6 prequel bloodstones, 5 diabolical fledglings, 4 vampire pianists, 3 dead professors, 2 Michelle actresses, and a Radu drooling something bloody. Hey there, welcome to the 19th day of October, and thus, the 19th film in our 31 days of Halloween. I hope you are having a great spooky season. I am having a delightful one, my own self. And it is time to turn our attention to a newer movie. We talked about VHS 85 yesterday, which was a Shudder production. So let's talk about a uh, production from Amazon Studios and the Blumhouse people. And of course, this is Totally Killer, a movie that has gotten a little bit of attention uh, on the back of its release, uh, which is a, a little bit surprising given the glut of movies hitting all the streaming services like the Pet Cemetery Bloodlines landed and made no splash, impressing the Russian judges, but not doing much for uh, a continuation of that story. And VHS 85 came out, and I haven't really heard a lot of buzz around that, uh, other than, you know, some people saying it was really gory, uh, which it is, it's fairly gory, but aside from that, nothing that really, you know, blows your hair back. Uh, I I did see a couple of people actually saying that was maybe the best of the series, which is crazy talk, but eh, whatever. Anyway, VHS 85 didn't really do it for me, certainly, which brings us to uh, Totally Killer, and Totally Killer is uh, a movie starring Kiernan Shipka, uh, who you may know from, you know, the Black Coat's daughter, a.k.a. February. And <laughs> um, what else has she been in? The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix. And, you know, she has definitely been uh, around. And uh, it is directed by uh, Nanachka Khan, and uh, who kind of made her bones off of uh, Family Guy and some some other work like that. Uh, it's written by David Madelon, Sasha Pearl Raver, and Jen D'Angelo. And none of them, you know, uh, writers, I mean, all of them have worked before, certainly, but none are, you know, uh, producing anything that we would know in this world. Uh, but uh, w- what the story is, is you've got Kieran and Shipka uh, playing Jamie, and she's a fairly typical teenager, other than the fact that I don't think that she's a teenager anymore. And in fact, one of the, the drawbacks of this movie is that all of the teenagers look like they're about 47 years old. But what are you going to do? Um, anyway, she is uh, leading a fairly normal teenage life, going to school. Her uh, parents are very suburban and uh, a little nerdy. And, you know, she's got her best friend at school and, you know, uh, the, the, the town is mostly known for the fact that there was a series of murders in the late 80s and 1987, to be precise, uh, called the Sweet 16 Killer, who killed three people known as the Sweet 16 Killer because he stabbed each of them precisely 16 times. And so the things kick off when Jamie's mother becomes the latest victim of the Sweet 16 killer some, you know, what, uh, 35 years later, 36 years later. And her friend uh, is, uh, ironically enough, building a time machine. And one thing leads to another. Jamie ends up being chased by the killer into the time machine, tries to stab her, the knife goes into the uh, console of said time machine and presto changeo she is now back in 1987 where she has to try to 
stop the killer and thereby save her mother from dying and, you know, three and a half decades later. And so that's your setup. And much of the movie is, uh, a, a, you know, sort of a comedy in the Back to the Future vein. Uh, they even name check Back to the Future in this movie. And it's a lot of, you know, making references to the 80s. And it's interesting that this movie is set in the eight, late 80s, which is about the same amount of time between the 50s and the 80s in Back to the Future. And in fact, this one might be set a little bit uh, further back in terms of just actual chronology and in terms of the number of years, which is crazy to me. That, that seems strange that uh, as a human being, I remember when Back to the Future came out and thought, wow, the 50s were forever ago. And now this movie uh, comes out and I'm like, wow, the 80s were two weeks ago. Uh, but such is the nature of time and the, the fluid aspects of it. Uh, but it does have some fun with the premise. And that's what you want out of a movie like this. It's a, a good enough time. Uh, probably there, there's a joke where um, she goes to the high school that she attends uh, that, that are known as the Warriors or something like that. And when she gets there uh, in the future, you know, in our time here in the present, um, you know, it's like a Roman soldier or something like that. She goes back to uh, check it out in the 80s and it's this really terrible caricature of like a Native American warrior. And she's like, oh yeah, there's the racism. You knew that was coming. And I, that was a really funny bit. And there's a lot of stuff that I, as someone who was alive in the 80s, recognize and think is pretty funny. Like parents just chain smoking as they're dragging their kids around. And the rather loose nature of things. Like when she goes to the school to try to find her mother uh, back then. Um, the secretary is just like, what do you need? Oh yeah, here, okay. Here's her room number and uh, phone number if you need it. And she's like, oh, there's no, like, you don't need a form signed or anything. And the woman's like, well, why on earth would I need, you You said you needed the thing. I gave you the thing. What's the problem? Um, and that's a, a really nice observation about how the 80s were probably trusting to a fault. But that's just how things worked. Like, you said you were, you know an electrician people believed you were an electrician because we weren't totally consumed by uh you know worry and fear the way that modern society is and and there's some references to that and it's you know it's well observed and it's pretty funny and then you have the serial killer story that's going on and the deaths are pretty good i like the fact that in uh, scream fashion the killer as he's going after the uh, you know the young women the teenagers that he gets the shit kicked out of them pretty substantially throughout the movie and that's a pretty good time and uh, it, it, it all of that comes together in a resolution that kind of works well enough and if I sound like I am not being effusive in my praise it's not that the movie is bad because it is not a bad movie by any stretch. I'm probably being slightly less effusive because I thought it was just fine. And that is that, like that damns it with faint praise. And I don't mean it like that because I think people ought to watch the movie. I think that it is uh, the comedy is good. And, and as I said, I think the comedy is well observed. And, and lands more often than not. Um, it's got just a murderous row of character actors and so forth. Uh, starting with like Randall Park is in this, uh, who is always a treat to see. And Julie Bowen is in it. And Lachlan Munro is in it. And all of the younger actors are very good uh, in their roles. And it like all of it's well acted. And it it's kind of sly. And it's funny. And it's not a laugh a minute, but it's pretty funny as as a whole. There's one scene in particular where she shows up to gym class and they're playing dodgeball. 
and she kind of turtles and is like, this can't be real. They can't have done this. And as I was watching, I was like, oh yeah, they, they probably don't do that in gym anymore. And as a teacher, I feel like I ought to know that. Uh, I need to ask the, the local gym teacher, like, when did they stop doing dodgeball? Because I understand why they stopped. It's barbaric. And the way that they show it uh, in in Totally Killer, the way that it's presented, is very funny. And that scene alone, it, it was kind of worth it uh, for me. And, uh, you know, but the, the question kind of comes along as you're watching the movie. Is this more horror or is this more of a comedy? And if it's both evenly, do both things work alongside one another? And I don't know that it does I think tonally it falls more into a comedic realm with horror elements um not I, like on, on these the Tucker and Dale versus evil scale where that is an almost perfect blend of comedy and horror this lands further into the comedy than that uh even though it does have its gory moments and and it's definitely understands slasher tropes and uses some of those. And you get into a point as with any time travel movie where, you know, Kiernan Shipka believes she knows what's going to happen. And then a thing changes and now she's off script and doesn't really know what's going to happen. Um, so all of that is, is fun enough. Like it, it's a perfectly entertaining, quick, well-paced movie. Uh, Randall Park is criminally under, underused, as are some of the other character actors, which is a real shame because, as I said, it's a murderous row of uh, good character actors and good comedic actors, and they don't have a ton to do in this movie, although when they are given stuff to do, then they, they certainly uh, chew up the material and, and spit it out. It, it's There's some good stuff in there. So, it's... It's a, a, a perfectly fine way to spend an afternoon or an evening. It's not super scary, uh, of course. And the comedy feels very light. It feels very bubbly as a film. That you're going to see it and kind of give those chuckles of recognition. Or like, oh, that was a, a cute joke. But that's kind of it. There, it's not gut busting at any point. Like, I didn't, I didn't laugh hard at anything, but I was amused through the whole movie. Uh, so, you know, my amusement level, very high, uh, chuckling often. Uh, however, like actual laughter, not so much. The dodgeball scene got me pretty good. And the racism line, uh, also landed, uh, with me pretty well, but the rest of it, I was, I was pretty, you know, I don't, I don't want to say middling on because I enjoyed it. It just is very light fare. And if you ask me <laughs> in, in a year, if I've seen a movie called Totally Killer, I may not be able to tell you that I have. Maybe I will. Uh, maybe uh, it'll it'll live a little longer in, in the memory than I think it will. But I kind of suspect that I'm going to forget this movie pretty quickly. Especially considering some of the other movies that have come out this year that have been real winners. And we've still got a couple of those to talk about. And, and so this one, I think, falls in that category of like, perfectly entertaining... Uh, a nice diversion of a movie, but not great. And and I think maybe I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I won't spoil it because it's got a fairly interesting ending. And one thing I do like is that the ending leans a little bit farther into the ramifications of time travel than I would have suspected. I don't want to overstate that because it's not a giant deal, but it, it definitely comes up with some things. I'm like, oh yeah, right. I guess that probably would have been a thing uh, based on, you know, her actions. And and there's some kind of cute and fun stuff uh, based on that. So, yeah, so that's Totally Killer, uh, which is a totally fine way to spend uh, an afternoon. Uh, if you are uh, bouncing around this weekend and are looking for something to watch and you have the Amazon Prime, Totally Killer is a, a, a per perfectly fine way to spend 90 to, uh, you know, 100 minutes and uh, in, in, enjoy yourself. Uh, and shout out to Olivia Holt, by the way, who plays the young version of Kiernan Shipka's mother. And she's really, really good in it. Uh, she has a really nice character arc and she's really fun. Uh, so I, I don't want to go past 
that performance and and not single it out because she's really really good um as is Kiernan Shipka although it's interesting to see her do like straight comedy as, as much of this movie is and and I think she's got the chops for it she's not a great comedic actress but she's pretty good she can hold her own uh, against people like Lachlan Monroe and Randall Park, who are pretty good comic actors. So uh, that is it for uh, Totally Killer and thus the 19th day of Halloween. Uh, coming up tomorrow, we are going to have uh, another one-off, and then we're going to do a little bit of a series, and then a one-off, and then a little bit of a series, and then the final stretch into Halloween. That's how close we are. We don't have a ton of stuff left ahead of us. Uh, only... Uh, after today, uh, a sweet 12 days left of Halloween. So I hope you're enjoying it. I really am. I'm trying to make myself stop and really savor uh, the Halloween stuff, but I'm watching something spooky every day, and that's been really fun. Uh, and sharing it with you, of course, is is fantastic. So I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, please, please, please drop me a line then on the Discord. Let me know how you're enjoying uh, this series and how you're enjoying these movies if you've seen them. There was a lot of chatter about the Final Destination movies, and that was fun. So uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, some of this other stuff lands, uh, especially this and VHS 85 and things like that. So uh, more tomorrow. But in the meantime, have yourself a spooky day. And I will talk to you again for more of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow.